All righty. Good evening, everyone. Today is uh, Monday, October 16th. I think it's going to be a day that we remember for a lot of reasons. Um, we're here at the Pride Perspectives webinar uh, at Trinity Pauling School um, to discuss the Center for Learning Achievement. And I was explaining to someone today that the Pride Perspectives webinar started um, a few years back during COVID when we wanted to maintain our out reach to the public, to people who couldn't come to campus. Um, and we found it such a valuable way to talk about different topics um, on campus that we decided to continue it. So tonight's uh, topic is the Center for Learning Achievement. It will be recorded so you can watch it again or share it with other um, people, but we're glad, we're glad to welcome you here. I think another benefit of COVID is that we know how to use Zoom. So if you feel that you have any questions. We have those that were um, uh, given to us before during your registration process. But if any questions come up during the webinar, please feel free to use the chat feature um, as well as the hand raising feature if you'd like to uh, be unmuted. Um, we have a whole host of both current students and a couple of former students who are graduates of the Center for Learning Achievement. And um, without further ado, I will ask uh, Bill Taylor, our head of school, to introduce himself and then the panel. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Bill Taylor. I'm head of school at Trinity Pauling. Um, this is my ninth year as being head. However, I began my career at Trinity Pauling as a, as a teacher and then uh, an administrator and uh, was here for 13 years before I left uh, and was a head of school somewhere else and uh, and really have been so excited to have returned uh, nine years ago now. So thank you for spending some time with us this evening. We're really excited about the topic. We're uh, proud about this topic and, uh, and I know we've got some great students and alumni to uh, to share with you their experience with the Center for Learning Achievement. Thanks, Bill. Um, my name is Chris Gilman. I'm the director of the Center for Learning Achievement. This is my 13th year working here. I graduated from TP in 2005. I was a six-year student. I uh, went to middle school here, probably on the early when it first started, um, but excited to be here. I coach. I'm a dorm parent. I work with the senior class, um, and I think I taught almost everybody on the panel here for student and past student. So, It'll be interesting to see if my teaching worked um, for them, but um, I'm so happy everyone could be here and I'm excited to talk to you about the CLA. Jack, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hello, I'm Jack I'm from Vernon, Connecticut. This is my second year here. I'm in analytical writing with uh, Mr. Gilman and uh, been, uh, graduating 25. Max? Uh, I'm Max Barron. I'm from New Jersey. I'm also in the LEAD program. It's my second year, and I'm in analytical writing right now. And Joe? Yeah. Uh, my name is Joe Tumalo. I'm from Mayopac, New York. Uh, it's my fourth year at Trinity Pauling, and I was in the LEAD program for two years, and now I'm in executive skills currently. Good. Richie? I don't know about Mayor Pack, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that afterwards. <laughs> uh, no, I'll joke aside. I am Richard Boulding, and I uh, was a reclass junior um, at Trinity Pauling and um, a former prefect as well. And now I'm currently at Stony Brook University um, in my senior year uh, studying uh, mass communications. Christian. Hi, yeah, so I'm Christian Schrader. I'm from Westport, Connecticut. I was a three-year student here at Trinity Pauling uh, and three years in the LEAD program, class of 2021. And I'm a current junior at Lowell University of Maryland uh, studying sustainability management within the Salinger Business School. Wonderful. Um, so Chris, we just uh, heard a few acronyms flying around, and yeah. CLA and analytical, well, analytical writing isn't an acronym, but can you explain, give us a little overview of what the CLA encompasses? Sure. So the CLA, I like to, it, I, I talk about it as an umbrella and then underneath that umbrella, there's sort of three signature, pretty distinct programs that we have. 
uh, more acronyms to come. Um, but we have our lead program and that's geared more towards students with dyslexia or sort of learning differences, dysgraphia, dyscalculia. It's a two-year program. And over that two-year span, a student will take three courses that are sort of lead courses in addition to some other classes. So they'll be, um, you know, they'll take comp one reading, comp and analytical writing, like you heard from, from some of the current students, in addition to their normal history, science, math, um, English courses. Our EMP program is our English mastery program. So focusing more on English language and proficiency and comprehension. Again, a student in our EMP program will take three courses over a two-year span in addition to their other classes. And then we have an executive skills, which is a one-year program that can be sort of repeated. We more we don't really like to have our ESP students in for more than two years. Um, we think, you know, after the two-year cycle, they're they're ready to sort of spread their wings and fly. Um, and the ESP is going to focus a little bit more on organization, time management, um, study skills, uh, some social skills. So so it'll help the day-to-day -day life of Trinity Pauling and getting organized. Um and getting them sort of situated with what, what boarding school and what life will throw at them. Okay, great. Um, and what would you say is the breakdown of those different programs? Numbers? So cur currently we have 53 students in our program. Um, our lead is sort of the heavy one right now. We're about 21 students in our lead program and about 16 students in our ESP and then about 16 or so in our, in our EMP, if my math is sort of accurate there. Um, and I, we have 23 CLA graduates that still attend Trinity Pong. So they've either graduated from the lead program or EMP program or, um, from the executive skills. So, um, you can join the program at any point of sort of your educational career. It doesn't have to start in ninth grade. It doesn't have to finish as a 12th grader. So, um, students that come in at different times can sort of, uh, enroll in our program and, um, you know, sort of graduate from the program that they that they're enrolled in and, and still have a few years of at Trinity Pauling. Yeah. So as as you see, it's it's a like I, I always kind of describe it as a subset of our population of our 200 and, you know, some odd 70 kids, um, 53 and 23. So it's about 70, 70 or so kids who are in that subset mm -hmm. of the population. So it's not it's not that. Um, Bill, this is also one of the, um, I think, big features of the program and in just letting people know how long we've been doing this. Yes, yes. Uh, we have been, this is our 49th year of, uh, of having this program. It's gone through different iterations of names, but it began 49 years ago. Uh, and it began uh, out of sort of the the school's, you know, foundational DNA. Uh, you know, Trinity Pauling has always been and and currently is a, a very student-centered school. And back in the early to mid-1970s, uh, there, you know, was a specific English teacher who was trying to figure out why some of the boys he was teaching were not finding the success that he thought they should be establishing. Uh, they were bright boys. Uh, they were working hard, but you know they weren't. They 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 were not able to perform in that English class, whether it was writing papers or or uh, uh, analyzing the text of novels that they were reading. Uh, and the more he worked with them, he came to the realization that they they had been undiagnosed students that were dealing with dyslexia and, and the processing of language. They were processing language differently. So he and his wife, this is now, I'm talking about Ted and Carol Nealon, uh, the founders of this program. He and his wife did extensive research on this and they essentially adapted uh, Orton Gillingham, which was the, you know, the premier uh, remediation process for children with dyslexia, elementary school students. They adapted it and, and, and iterated it to work with adolescents. Um, so that, you know, that's how it started. 
and uh, and I think that for the the relevance today is you know, has to do with it being born out of a student centered aspect of the school. Uh, it was also highly innovative. Uh, Trinity Polling was the first uh, school to start using computers uh, to teach uh, language skills. And uh, back in the 1970s and early 80s, you know, there was a computer lab that, uh, that the students in the program were using to, uh, to learn how to process language differently uh, and, and helping with their writing and so forth. Uh, so student-centered, uh, innovative. It also reflects the school's real uh, acknowledgement about the importance of relationships and empathy in the learning community. Uh, Trinity Pauling has always believed that, uh, that each individual learns best when they are learning in community with one another. And the role of community, the ro role of relationships uh, are critically important. So to be able to create a specific program to help students achieve to their highest potential uh, reflects the importance of empathy, re recognizing students who, uh, who needed to have a different way in to language in order to, to achieve to their full potential. Um, and, and in so doing, uh, created a pathway for a deeper level of self-awareness. Uh, students sort of figuring out, this is how I learn best. This is what works for me. And uh, and a little bit later, I know, you know we're going to hear from Richie and, and Christian about how that process has worked in college for them. Um, but, uh, you know, Chris, I, you know, I mentioned a little bit about uh, Orton Gillingham, but could you, I think the real distinctive advantage of the CLA is the fact that it it flows from specific curricula mm -hmm. that have been developed around these three different areas. Uh, because this is not extra help. Uh, it's not tutoring. Mm -hmm. This is a specific uh, curricula that has been developed and it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the many reasons that makes the CLA so successful is those distinct programs in those specific areas. And, and like Bill, you mentioned, it's, it's not a tutoring, it's not a one-on-one -on -one help, but it's a design curriculum for these students and, and figuring out which program and which curriculum works for each student is one of our passions. And, and one of the things that we take our pride in. And like Bill said, we're, you know, the staff that I, that I get to work with, my colleagues are Orton Gillingham trained. So we take a modified Orton Gillingham approach to the curriculum, um, especially in lead and EMP we're starting at the foundation level. So um, a student might come in and in the beginning, you know, we often talk about, it might seem a little bit more of a review, but the point is to sort of fill in the gaps in that foundation and start fresh and sort of build that strong, that strong foundation and build upon that. So we'll focus in on spelling rules, um, phonics cards, we'll, we'll sentence structure, paragraph planning, reading comprehension strategies, things that sort of will make the student gain some success and momentum, not just in our program, but across all classes at Trinity Pauling and, and gain the confidence and sort of the ability to, to navigate that. For executive skills, it's a little bit different. There's not a there's not a, a designated curriculum per se for that, but the goal is <clears throat> for students to sort of set goals for themselves. And we sort of have milestones throughout the year. And, and Joey, you can talk about this in a little bit. You know, it's it's by the end of the year, we want our students to become better advocates. They, we want them to be become better critical thinkers and and have a an ability to manage their time and to plan ahead and and sort of be able to navigate right what Trinity Pauling sort of throws at them, but then also what college is going to throw at them and life's going to throw at them. So they're we're sort of building the skills in in, in both in all three of our programs to sort of make that student become successful, not just at Trinity Pauling, but years down the road and. Hopefully, Richie and Christian can share their um, <clears throat> success in college and, and beyond. But it's one of those things that that I think we do so well and and being able to have this curriculum around our programs and not just sort of a drop in center or tutor center, but it's a little bit more. We we put a little bit more emphasis on on the outcome. Hey, 
forgot I, I put myself on mute when I had a cough. Um, so I agree what, what you said, Chris, about the self-sufficiency. I think that's something that um, is unique to the program. Why else would you say um, that we do this, um, you know, I would argue better than anyone else? I mean, I you think, know, go ahead, Bill. Go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead, Bill. Well, I, I would just simply say that uh, I, I think the success here uh, of the CLA relates to the relationship that the CLA has with the school as a whole and vice versa. Uh, I, I mentioned the fact that this is a highly student-centered school. That That's a key aspect to this. This is also a school that that talks quite a bit and, and, uh, and has as its mission uh, the, you know, the ambition to, uh, have students discover their unique gifts and talents. And so that, that focus on self-awareness. And so we want every student to have a deep awareness of how they learn, of how, you know, how they learn best, uh, and, and to know that about themselves. And so, not just the C the CLA, but the school as a whole is designed for that. And so when students in the CLA are learning uh, these compensatory strategies to help them optimize their learning, it's reinforced by a school as, you know, the whole school, that that's part of the school's basic DNA to help students discover themselves. And then the last thing I would say is uh, around the same time that the uh the CLA was be, was created the school also uh developed a pretty comprehensive way to recognize effort and uh and the effort challenge here at Trinity Pauling is also a distinctive aspect of this school so every student is recognized uh and rewarded uh for their how hard they're they're working in a given task academically athletically uh, in the dormitory, in clubs, uh, in any type of other activity. Uh, and so for students who have histor historically had to work harder uh, with their academics, this aspect of being recognized for their effort and their hard work is like an added booster, you know, rocket booster for them. And it just it it just builds confidence. and uh, and that confidence, then leads to greater momentum, uh, deepening self-awareness, and then it becomes sort of a an engine that's that's really revving high. Chris, yeah, no, that you exactly right, Bill. And and the two words that I sort of were going to chime in with is confidence, which you touched on, and and self-awareness. And I think it's it's one of those, you know, we hear the stories all the time, and again, hopefully, we'll hear some. Um, from some of our alums and current students, but it, you know, traditionally the, the students in our program oftentimes, you know, didn't, didn't have success where they previously came from, or maybe they had it and they sort of just, they, they didn't know how to show it. And I think, you know, through the CLA, they become more confident in their ability to learn and their ability to, to grow as students. And, and it starts to really show. And, and, and most of the time our, our students in our CLA are become the more confident and outspoken um, students at Trinity Pauling just because they learn to self-advocate, they learn to have that confidence, and then it sort of becomes a little bit contagious and spreads out, like Bill was saying, but in the relationship between the CLA and the school and vice versa. Um, but it's really important for these students to start to see the success and learn that, you know, it's 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 important for, for the dedication and the tools that they're learning throughout their process here is, is able to sort of spread and, and they gain that confidence and self-awareness about themselves. Mm -hmm. Richie and Christian, love to hear from you about, uh, you know, the transition from Trinity Pauling to college uh, and and those self-advocacy skills and then having that sense of, you know, how you learn and uh, what type of environment is going to work best for you. So what I would say is, well, self-advocacy, I could say I've never really had a problem <laughs> uh, with that, <laughs> but what I will say is when I first got to TP and I was placed in the lead program, I felt, I felt that it was frustrating, but not because it wasn't a good program. It was actually, it's actually a great program. The problem that I had was I was like, man, it's just like, I'm just reviewing. Like I already learned all this stuff in previous years and I felt like I didn't need to learn it. But then as I started going through, you know, the, just the program itself, 
and being there for so long, I was able to realize that I was looking over a lot of the things that are truly fun to, fundamental to just writing structure and everything like linking verb adverbs and how to structure a sentence. And one thing that, you know, I struggled with with coming into TP was coming in, I had about a 60 overall at my last school. And that's not because I didn't try hard or I didn't put in the time, you know, the effort or anything like that I had nothing to do with that. I was actually at tutoring sessions, the whole nine every day. Um, the problem was is that I had truly had a difficult time just learning, comprehending what's being taught in the classroom and that one-on-one -on -one connection I just never received before. So um, coming into TP and being able to utilize those skills and realize that I'm no different from the person sitting next to me. It's just, I just have a different way of learning and understanding that the LEAD program is designed to help those that may just be at a small disadvantage if you even want to look at it like that. Um, but I was able to capitalize on those skills after TP. Um, and like even little things like the planners, I don't know if you guys still have to use like the planners and kind of do all that. It's frustrating because it's like, I already know what I have to do. I know when the deadlines are, but let me tell you, Google Calendar is my best friend. I follow up on emails. When Mr. Uh, Gilman reached out and was like, hey, would you want to be on the panel? He could show you the text. It was all punctuation. It was everything. <laughs> you just continue to utilize it. And the more that you utilize it, the better off in the future you'll be. And it gets used in college, no doubt. Yeah, definitely just to some add on some of that aspect for me personally. I know when I came from my public high school before and I talked to my parents, it's like, Christian, I, we think you should go to this uh, this place, Terry Pauling. And it's like, okay, cool. Like before this, there's this great thing called the Lee program. And I was like, but why? Because I felt like I was a good student in high school where I was previously, but I always felt my parents saw this too. There was like, there was something missing and but we just couldn't find out what it was. And when I got to TP, I same thing as Richie, I felt like I was like, this is, this feels like, you know, I'm being brought down to this lower level of I'm doing all this review. I've already done this before, you know, why? And then I, it was my uh, junior year at TP and I was in effective writing with Mr. Gilman and we were doing a, hmm. I can't, I can't remember what, what exactly but we were writing something and he I wrote my paper and I handed it to him he graded it and he handed it back to me and it's riddled in red pen and I kind of it clicked for me I was like okay this is why and as I went further down the line with the lead program exactly learning about how to structure sentences adverbs adjectives all this stuff that seems rather rudimentary for someone like me it's a, you know it takes a real it took a real step back and understand what the importance of all these things are. And it definitely translates to college, you know, writing proper emails to all these people, uh, essays are, I, I can't even say how many essays I've written with the utilization from the skills from the lead program and stuff down the line too, that is going to be really important to me, like applying for a job, writing a resume, uh, writing you know, all these important things. It's not just for college, it's for life. Writing is a life skill, no matter no matter where you go. And I think that's the biggest thing for me is, you know, writing. And yeah. So Max and Jack Christian just turned in papers. Hopefully they don't have as much red pen as, as you had, but we'll have to see. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to have <laughs> red pens. You got to start somewhere. Everybody does. So uh, Jack, Max, and Joe, uh, talk a little bit about how you've seen uh, what you're learning in the LEAD program carry over to some of the other classes that you're in, uh, or even, you know, what the, you know, the effort challenge, how that, how that factors into uh, your overall experience as a student here. Uh, wait, who's going first? I'll, I'll go first. You can go first, Jack. I'll go first. Why not? Um, so right now we're we're we were just read over a story and we're writing a uh, essay about it and sort of how some of the some of the words of the story symbolize some of that stuff. So he's been helping us figure out how to like uh, uh, what's call it? What's the word? Uh, annotate the uh, the pieces and put them in the paragraphs. And he helped us outline the first two body paragraphs. 
And then we had to do the third on our own, which is, it, it was a little tough, but ended up doing okay on it. Just turned it in, uh, turning it in tonight, just finishing up some minor details. But I feel like it's helped me with some of my other classes. I'm taking English Honors 3 right now. We're typing up different paragraphs and different essays and like sorting, seeing what I need to look for in texts and what I need to put into my writing. And it's really helped me with that point of it and sort of writing essays because I always thought I was like a decent essay writer and this has just opened it up a lot and now I feel really well in writing and that and uh, I think the point system is great here I mean I had nothing well I had something like it at my last school I was at but it was nothing compared to what it is now and it really helps you figure out what you need to get down and what you need to figure out in most of your classes Yeah, um, I can add to that. Just like overall, my experience with lead, like before I came to Trinity Pauling, I had like kind of like really bad time management. And I would say with like the two years of me being here, I've seen like myself with improvement with like my like, time and like getting things on time. Like I would like not turn things, or like I just like could not figure out my time. And coming to the lead program, like taking the baby, baby steps from last year and now taking kind of like bigger steps, kind of like, Really, I've, I've seen a big improvement, like, on time management. And then all, like, the baby steps, like, the phonics card and then, like, the paragraph stuff. And then my paragraphs this year in, like, English 1 I'm taking right now, I've seen, like, a big improvement with all that stuff, punctuation, like, sentence flow and everything. I still need, like, help with a few of those things, but I've definitely grown from, like, like, like kind of, like, bad stuff to, like, better. Yeah. Yo, what do you think? Uh, yeah, so kind of like what uh, Christian and Richard said, before I came to Trinity Pauling and I joined the lead program, like I already learned all uh, this stuff, like teaching me how to read and write, but like it didn't like put it into a perspective that I really could understand. And I didn't really get the support that Mr. Gilman and Mrs. Kellogg gave me when I was in the program. And it really like gave me more confidence in other classes, like reading out loud in classes, writing papers. And stuff like that, it, it just definitely really helped me become a better reader and writer. And the effort system, it gives you like, you might not you might not have the best grades in the class, you might not fully understand everything, but if you show the teacher you're putting in effort and like trying to get the homework done, paying attention in class, going extra helps, they'll give you a good effort mark and that'll balance it, balance it out even if you don't have the best grades in that class. Yeah, you know, thank you guys. That was uh, excellent. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier that uh, that the integration of the CLA with the school as a whole is 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 really one of the the main factors why it's so successful. Um, Chris, uh, could you talk a little bit about for the students who are in the CLA? How is that communicated to teachers who are not in the CLA? And uh, and how do you think that that makes uh, the academic environment that much richer at Trinity Pauling because of the CLA's existence and success? Sure. So each student that is enrolled in the CLA, whether it doesn't matter which program it is, it, it, their first year, they're given a point person. And that point person is, is somebody, a learning specialist from the CLA and they're sort of in charge of learning that student's profile inside and out. And the good thing about that is they're they're sort of the liaison from that student and and every teacher at Trinity Pauling, whether they're in the program or not. So the goal is they're in charge of, of reaching out to every single teacher of that current student and explaining their learning profile. So recommendations, accommodations, learning strategies, some helpful hints, some what what works well, what doesn't work well. And then they're follow that student throughout. So if you're a one-year ESP student, but you still have three more years at Trinity Pauling, that learning specialist is still representing that student. So that when each year they get a new set of teachers, there's still a letter and an outreach to those teachers sort of outlining again that, let's say Joe is a graduate of our ESP program. These are his accommodations or recommendations. These are some learning strategies that work for him. It helps across the board at Trinity Pauling because it sort of makes the teachers of each classroom, not just in the CLA, aware and sort of they're able to sort of different, differentiate the learning within that classroom. So scaffolding assignments, 
Maybe they share their notes. Maybe they're a little bit more active. And it's something I think has caught on, as Bill sort of alluded to earlier, and, and sort of made Trinity Pauling such a special place for boys to learn, not just students in our CLA, but just, just boys in general, being able to be active learners, active learners. So it creates this environment where each teacher is sort of aware of the students in their classroom, but it also sort of it makes the teacher sort of have to be adaptable to what sort of the population of that class is. And, you know, as we said, there's probably about 70 or so students, 75 students in, in the school that are either in our program or graduates, which is quite a bit, um, you know, and, and again, there may be eight of them in one classroom in history. So how do we work with that history teacher to sort of accommodate and still be able to get through the curriculum, but what are some ways and strategies that we can sort of incorporate to help sort of differentiate learning, differentiate that learning for everyone to, to benefit, benefit from? Yeah, you know, I was, I mentioned that I began my career here teaching, I was a history teacher. And, uh, and my first year teaching, I taught four sections of American history. And, uh, and the, sections that I had that had, you know, more than one or two students who were in the CLA, um, I quickly realized that I, I needed to do something different as a teacher, because I, you know, I was sort of rigid as a, as a teacher, you know, I'm going to teach the history chronologically and, you know, the order matters. Well, you know, I've had students in, in some of my classes that were struggling with the order of things chronologically. But what but their questions about history were fascinating because they were looking at it in a totally different way, uh, much more creative, much more dynamic. Uh, and so I had to, to adapt my teaching to everybody. And it, ma it, it made the class much more interesting to teach, but I also think it made, made it more effective for everybody to learn where I wasn't just sort of, you know, memorize these dates. Let's talk about how, you know, how these things influence one another. And then the creativity, the different ways of looking at issues that the students from the CLA were naturally doing benefited the class as a whole because they were, they were looking at concepts. They were looking at connections much more creatively than students who were not in the CLA. Mm -hmm. uh, so back to back to the students and and graduates uh of the school um did, being in the cla did 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 you feel like you know it was just another class uh or did you feel like it was you know you you know you were being pulled out to do something different um i guess oh, go ahead christian all right thanks richie um I was going to say, I'd say it's a healthy combination of both for me. Um, in terms of like, it's, it's another class. It It is, it is, well, it is another class, but it's, and I feel like I am being pulled away from certain things, but I know it's for the betterment of me. Even, even when I'm like, when I was doing the review with, you know, in Phonics or with Mrs. Kellogg, I only did a year of that. But previously in other schools and in other grades, I did phonics for probably like four years within my public school system. And I didn't think anything much of it until I did a year with Mrs. Kellogg when it was a review, if you will. But I feel like within that year of phonics, I encapsulated, I encaptured so much more than I had within that four year for however long it was. It was a long time ago, but for the whatever amount of years it was in the public school system so it is just another class but it is for the betterment of yourself personally and as well as like like mr taylor said with you know bringing new ideas i my friends always like comment on this they're always like i'll always say something that's like not with like i guess the norm but it's always like i'm thinking of something differently and i'm giving like a different thought process to whatever that thing is, whether it be academically or, you know, socially, but it's just adding more levels to deepen the conversation. Again, whether that's, whether, whatever that looks like in an academic setting or a social setting, whatever it may be. For me, I would say 
um yeah i would say the same kind of along the lines of it isn't like um felt like another class because it was um but i was coming from a whole different situation um coming in so at my previous school before uh tp what happened was i was put in a predicament where teachers would hand out tests and then have everybody start it and then um say richard and like whoever else stand up in the middle of the class and I can never forget the feeling of having to stand up in the middle of the class growing up and um, people would look. And I, I remember like people would always say, why does Rich always have to go into another room to, you know, get his test read and take a test in a different room? Is he stupid? Like I would constantly always replay that kind of in my head. And so um, coming into PP and like having a class that was catering more towards me but at the end of the day still had people from you know every other you know class or whatever the case is it just felt like it was just you know in inclusion that's that's exactly how i felt um so i would say it's really beneficial um and it's 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 just a great program all around you know christian you mentioned sort of you know coming up with ideas that uh are sort of out of the norm uh, you know, we have several board members at Trinity Pauling who are graduates of the CLA, and they are they are incredibly valuable, especially when you're you know a board member's responsibility is to think strategically about the school and its future, and and you want people who think differently to be in a st strategy session, mm -hmm. you know you want that neurodiversity uh when you're thinking about the school's future and how to how to get there uh so you know I, you know jack max and joe i'm looking at you and sort of saying you know you, you you've got a you know you've got a gift actually that is going to be a, a valuable asset to you uh when you when you're older and we, you'll discover it in college i'm sure like these guys have I would say, too, we hear often, I mean, if there's a student that's in, in our program and, and their roommate is not in the program, they'll sort of be sitting down at night doing homework, and, and whether it's an ESP student or a lead student, EMP, and they'll be like, well, how do, like what, is it, what are you working on? How do I get to do that, right? They'll see the planner or organize, or they'll see, you know, the, the outline for the essay, and I've had students come to me and that, that are not in the program and say, hey, my roommate had this awesome essay for her outline for their essay. Is there some, can you share it with me so I can use it for my English three class or English four class? So um, it's sort of, that's another way that back to the original question where it sort of makes the overall curriculum a little bit richer here is that it's sort of the students are picking up. It's not just helping the teachers sort of keep the differentiated learning, but the students also that are not in a program, it, it sort of spreads to them and they want to be a part of, um, want to be a part of the CLA, whether they're they're able to be or not, right? And I, I, I think, you know, that's a that's a great way of of restating what was said earlier, and that is, you know, it, it makes teachers stronger. But if you're not in the CLA, it makes your learning environment that much richer because uh, that's what the environment is as a whole doing. It's uh, it's you know seizing to take advantage of that neurodiversity in in the school's midst. Um, to your point, Bill, about the um, diverse learners, we just heard that um, one of our uh, CLA graduates back when when Brian, my husband, was a was a member of the class of 1978, uh, had prefect then just wrote a new book, and he he was a person who couldn't read when he came to Trinity Pauling, and now he's a children's book author. So, you know, that side of his brain, the creative side, definitely won in, in his case, and it's, it's wonderful to see. Um, Jack and Max and Joe, did you want to share a little bit um, about, about that, or, or shall we talk about what, what the structure looks like? Like what, what classes, or maybe Chris, you can best um, address how how the structure works. Like we've heard comp one, we've heard different things and and how you are not uh, taking some classes, but how, how the structure works, I guess. I'm struggling. Yeah, so so to make, uh, so for the, 
lead in, in EMP programs because you're taking the three years over two, three quick classes over the, over the two years. So the first year you take two classes, one's called composition one, which essentially is taking place of your English class. Um, and then reading comp essentially will take place of, of your modern language class. And, and, it, and we do that because, you know, as Richie was saying, we, we want the students to sort of just be intermixed with everybody else. So, you know, we're not pulling them from a special class to put them into a resource room or to go to a one-on-one -on -one peer to peer tutor. You're just, it's part of your block schedule. You just go about your day. Our CLA classrooms are right dead smack in the middle of our academic building. There's no sort of dungeon area. You're, you're, you're right there. So, um, so, so that will happen their first year. And then your second year, you're in analytical writing and you'll take that and, in place of your modern language. So it sort of fulfills your foreign language requirement. And you'll take a normal English, math, math, history, science class. And then for executive skills, you take your normal course load and your ESP class may fill in as an elective. Um, so you're still not missing. We have seven periods in our block schedule. So most of our students take five or six classes. So you still have some flexibility for free periods and, and study hall, and you still have flexibility to take an elective. Um, so you're not missing out necessarily on taking an art class or a public speaking class. You still are able to to sort of fulfill those requirements and, and, and your passions, but you still sort of need to focus on what, you know, you came to Trinity Pong. And a lot of times it's, it's let's focus on what we need to and whether that's a CLA class or um, I'm sorry, a lead class or, or an ESP class, then, then that's our goal is to, is to focus on those first and then work our way out. Mm -hmm. So st current students, you guys, why don't you, you tell, tell us what courses you're taking? What is, what is your academic day like? What, what's your course load? Max, what, what, what you got going on during the day? All right. So, um, this year it's a pretty uh i would say it's pretty like much of a not really breeze but much like easier than last year because like coming in and everything and doing like comp one and uh reading comp now we just have now i just have like anical writing now and uh we're uh, writing paragraphs reading and uh read response kind of right now we're just finishing that up uh yeah what other classes are you taking oh sorry um uh, I'm in all mainstream classes right now with, uh, like all the other students, like back in my old school, I would kind of be separated from everybody, which is like now, and I think it's like more better learning experience for me rather than being like in a class, of like, like two other kids and learning about history. I kind of like being in like, like with seven other kids and like group discussions, everything about that. So I've, um, I've, uh, like English two geometry and, uh, history. And those are all like mainstream with all the other kids. And I think that's like kind of best for me rather than being like put off to the side, like uh, we were saying before. Yeah. Joe, what are you taking? Uh, right now I'm taking uh, government, uh, English for Spanish to photography and pre-calculus. And I also take executive skills and the executive skills class definitely helps a lot. Cause if I have like a hard assignment that I really need help with i'll go to uh, mrs frost and she'll like help me work through it and i'll go if i have any questions on anything she'll answer them for me and, e and even if i don't have any um homework i i got all my work done for today she'll just say yeah you can just go back to your dorm if like if you don't have anything going on just take this for a free period and relax it's definitely okay. really nice to have jack what are you taking uh right now i'm taking analytical writing with Mr. Gilman and uh, my other class I'm taking uh, right now I have two freeze because I'm taking an art in the winter and one in the spring so those will fill up as soon as I get to those courses and I'm taking pre-calculus with uh, Mr. Doyle uh, English uh, English 3 um, uh, modern world history and that's it just those just those four right, right. now and so I just want to add, we heard Joe say he's taking Spanish now. So the modern languages are um, excluded in the first uh, two years of the program. If a student comes early enough to do that, he is then able to take a modern language. 
after he finishes. But as Mr. Gilman said, you know, we want them to get the English skills concrete before adding on another language. So uh, you can add add that on um, after after they're finished. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, uh Chris, could you talk a little bit about the process, uh, the application process, what's involved with that, uh, you know, testing that, that we're looking at and so forth? Sure. Um, so so most of the students, actually all the students that are in our programs have some sort of educational testing, whether it's neuropsych or 504 or IEP, and that will just be submitted with your normal application as if you're applying to Trinity Pauling. Oftentimes, I'll meet with the families through that process or I'll talk to the families through that process and make recommendations. Sometimes students that have testing don't necessarily are not necessarily a part of our CLA, but they have, you know, previous testing. And and some of uh, I say often the families, what what Trinity Pauling does naturally takes care of a lot. So the small classes the accessibility to teachers, the extra help, the, the supervised study halls. So it doesn't matter just because you have testing doesn't mean you're automatically a CLA candidate. Sometimes it works like that, but sometimes, you know, students find success here just, you know, just based off of what the support, the natural support of Trinity Pauling. But if they're, you know, if we do feel that there's a need for the CLA, then we'll sort of review the testing. We'll look at recommendations. I'll talk to previous counselors or previous teachers and just sort of get a sense of, the area um, that of, of greatest need. Sometimes there's situations students come in and, and sort of fit two of our programs and we'll sort of create a hybrid program for them um, that maybe, you know, maybe it's year two of lead and, and an ESP or again, wherever we feel that's best to support that student and sort of have them be successful, um, we'll, we'll work with. But again, we, we follow the testing, we'll help sort of facilitate new testing, any updated testing. So we sort of make sure that process is smooth for the families. The testing is sort of every three years is, is sort of our window range. We'll make sure that that testing is ready for that student to go off to college and they can, you know, through the college board. So we work closely with the families to sort of make sure that that everything is being sort of up to date and, and it's the students able to take that away with them. But it's a pretty, I, we will, our CLA department works very closely with the admissions office to make sure that sort of everything is, is in order and, and, and there's the right fit and we're able to support the student and for that student to be successful here. And, you know, one of the things that sort of evolved over the years um, is that more and more students just come with educational testing. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas you know, 15, 20 years ago, it'd be a very, you know, specific, uh, need, but it's become much more comprehensive. So we have students who will have educational testing during the application process, and you've seen it, uh, Mr. Gilman, that, mm -hmm. that we said, well, you know, I don't think they probably, I don't think they need the, the mm -hmm. CLA yep. because the, the normal environment, the everyday environment of the school is going to help, yep. you know, and, and that, in, that everyday environment is pretty structured, uh, you know, there's a time set aside for everything, mm -hmm. um, you know, for classes, for athletics, for study hall. 90% uh, of our faculty live right here on campus. So uh, extra help and, and seeing your teacher for uh, preparation the night before a test. That's all sort of part of the day-to-day the -day experience here for all students. Mm -hmm. And uh and so that, you know, that helps certainly the students who are in the CLA, but it, 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 it's a benefit for all students. Totally. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, seeing your teachers, uh, you know, you know, Richie and Christian, to, you know, when, you know, you were used to doing that, right. To, you know, you're self-advocating, right, Richard. And, uh, uh, how did that experience translate into college? Uh, did you, you know, what were your relate? What are your relationships like with professors? So, um, when I was at PP, I was always, I mean, Mr. Gilman, he he knows if I didn't understand something, I was either sending him a text or I was staying after class, whatever needed to happen in order to make sure I was really getting everything I was supposed to out of the program in the class itself, I was doing. Um, how that translated over to colleges, college is a whole different ballgame. 
Um, PP, um, they do an amazing job preparing you for it. Um, but it's almost like your hand gets held a little bit. And you realize once you get to college, you know, those teachers that might be in your corner cheering you on saying, listen, you got to make sure you submit this and submit that on time and, you know, different things like that and give extensions. And I really like that, you know, in the, in the real world. Um, but I think where I really started to realize it was I started out at University of New Haven and that was a much smaller school compared to Stony Brook. So the teachers were a little bit more like, you know, listen, you know, make sure this gets in during that time, et cetera. And then I transferred over to Stony Brook Public University, 25,000 kids there. And um, it's it's a free for all. You have to, you know, make sure that you're handing things on time, reaching out to the professors. You have kids, you know, ranging from like 20 kids in one class. So a lecture size that I saw the other day that has like 800 people in the class. So it, it's completely different. But to go back to your point, Mr. Um, Mr. Taylor, the self-advocating just never stops. It, in my opinion, just progresses because the more that you advocate for yourself, the more, you know, the more opportunities that comes your way and the more doors that open for you. Um, just by advocating to myself, I got um, a lot of internship um, opportunities and um, just, just a lot of great things happen. So just keep on, if there's one thing that I can just say to everybody, whether you're perspective or current, just keep advocating for yourself. If it's not, you know, for some people it's not easy and I definitely understand that. And TP has a great class, I'm not sure if it's still there, but you know, um, a great public speaking and different different things like that to help strengthen those skills that you may quote unquote lack or not be sufficient. Bishop, what was your experience? Yeah. So definitely for me, Richie, it's definitely not easy self-advocating. I know I was a tough cookie to crack for sure. I I was I was like, no, I can pretty streamline. I can do it myself. I I don't need anybody else. And then finally my senior year, I was like, okay, I started to slip a little bit in math. And thankfully my advisor, uh, Doc Mandigo, was my dorm parent actually a couple of nights in Barstow, but I'd always be like, he you know, I was in a room. I was in my room and the room next to me was an old uh, dorm parents apartment. I'd just be like, doc, I, I need help with this homework. And he'd be like, yeah, sure. Just like, and I'd walk over. Um, But definitely in that aspect, I would always like, it's, it's always important to self-advocate. And especially now it's, I go to a small university, um, Loyal is a Jesuit program. So the teachers are always really, um, they really want to help you succeed. And I still meet with, an advisor, which is in um, the DSS program, which is a uh, disability, disability support services, but it's just about like, you know, planning classes. I can't meet with him now actually, because he's on a honeymoon in Jamaica, but normally I would be meeting with him uh, uh, every other week, but it's just about planning classes right now. I'm setting up my schedule for the spring, uh, you know, just to check in. You know, like he's always asked me, you know, how's it going? Um, and that really kind of makes me think back to like the teachers here at TP of just like, um, you know, how is everything going? You know, how are you finding everything? All right. As class is going. Okay. And it's the same thing in college. And it's really, really prepared me for, you know, making sure that I'm turning in essays on time, homeworks, you know, the way it's supposed to be, the formats all there, everything like that, all across the board have prepared me so well. So Jack, Max, and Joe, what's it like having, you know, your teachers also be your coaches and uh, and maybe your dorm parent? What's it, you know, how accessible have you found all of your teachers at Trinity Pauling? Oh, I'll go first. Um, yeah, it definitely helps a lot uh, knowing, like, your teacher's like right around the corner and you can just email them. Can you meet me in the library? I'm really struggling with uh, whatever. And they'll just be right there for you. And um, it's, it's kind of like, uh, what's the word for it? Um, it's, it's like they're like, 
like kind of like hold like um Richard said, like holding your hand for it, but like they're definitely like setting you up for what college feels like with all that they do. Yeah. Go ahead, Max. Um, well, first off, I was like, I would never thought like I'd be like eating or going to the gym with my teachers or seeing them there. <laughs> but uh, with like all the teachers being around, it's like so accessible. Like I could like email them or like text them or reach them and they'll like, like help me out. Or it's not really like sink or swim here at all. And which uh, is like really helpful. Yeah. And Jack, I know your uh, CLA teacher is also one of your hockey coaches. Yeah, it's fun seeing them in two different like spots, like on the ice and uh, in the in the classroom. You get kind of two separate Gil- uh, Mr. Gilmans. Really? Uh, it's kind of fun. I mean, yeah, like Max said, it's really like it's not sink or swim here. It's like you always have support from teachers around you, and you're so close to all your teachers on a daily basis. And I think a lot of you know to sort of I, I guess everybody touched on and I hopefully you know I'm sort of recapping it for you guys is that I I think the goal is for our students to understand who they can turn to and when they can turn to certain people and and I think the goal is that as their time at Trinity Pauling sort of wears on that they sort of it, it becomes second nature and I think you know to Christian's point you know like you you knew Doc was able he wasn't necessarily you know it doesn't have to be your math teacher but he is the math chair and it can help you. So the students become comfortable, not just asking their teachers, but just sort of finding an adult and and asking them for help. And I think that's a huge piece that, you know, I was just talking with the family today about that. It, it, it It's that confidence as a student, you're like, Hey, I need help. Can you help me? You know, instead of saying, I have to go find Mr. Gilman, right. Or Mr. Man to go to, to get the help. It's, it's being able to just feel comfortable enough putting yourself out there and being vulnerable, um, you know, and, 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 realizing that it's okay to ask for help and and that's something within our program and, and and school but specifically the program that we want our students to start to become confident with it with asking and obviously Richie you've never had a problem with that at all um for sure but Christian too I remember right it was a little bit I, I had to push you to come to extra help and then I think you know by your second year of the program you were knocking on my door asking for help so um Again, one of the things that I, I think is 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 definitely important that we do and, and showcases the the confidence and, and the self advocacy advocacy skills that we that we provide our students. Ms. Foster, I'm mindful of our time. Have we answered the questions that have come in on the chat? We, we have just about. I was just going to say the same thing. The chat, um, yeah, just had a couple questions about uh, formal diagnoses. I think, Chris, you describe that and also a couple thank yous which is really nice to hear but I did want to correlate real quickly um the college piece because we've talked about going off to college and just how well our program is known in the college world and I think Slade uh Mead or, or Bill Dunham as college counselors um are able to say how well most colleges oh oh it's the TP oh you're a graduate of that program oh then fantastic they know how well kids are prepared. And, um, you know, I, I know the current students, you're a year, a year or so away from that, but uh, usually it's a rather easy transition to get into a college that will continue to support you, but, um, but um, able to have, you know, that more, keep more success going. Uh, but we appreciate your time. It is just eight o'clock. We'd like to honor our, our commitment here. Please, if there are any questions uh, for any of us in the admission office, for Mr. Gilman in the CLA, for Mr. Taylor in the head of school's office, uh, or for any of these students, please feel free to reach out to us and we will continue to answer them um, as we go forward. So we appreciate your time. Thanks for turning into the Pride Perspectives um, tonight. And one thing I didn't do was look at the next one, but you will be, communicated with about the next Pride Perspectives webinar. Tune in. Uh, It will be in your inbox shortly. So thanks so much for your time tonight. Richie and Christian, great to see you guys. Yeah, so good to see you guys. Stay well. Come visit us.
Thank you guys.